Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be using this amazing app by Kerry Huang that basically shows you the entire universe and the scale of things in our universe. We're going to briefly talk about some of the objects we see here and we're going to scroll through and discover what our universe has in it. You can also check out this app in the link in the description. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So let's uh, start this, and as you start this app, you'll actually find yourself right here. Here's us. Here's some flowers. Uh, Dodo bird that basically got killed by us a long time ago. And a uh, giant earthworm. Now we're going to start by zooming in first, and as you can see, basically this is our scale. We're going to zoom in and discover some of the smallest things in the uh, universe. So let's start by going a little bit closer and here's uh, hummingbirds and shrews and matchstick and so on. And this is uh, what you would see if you were to start zooming in closer and closer. Now I'm going to just stop at some of the more interesting things. One of them being this largest bacteria that's uh, basically only about 10th of the centimeters. Now let's keep going. There is the width of human hair. Here is a human egg. And this, basically, this is what you were made from. And uh, as we keep going closer and closer, we'll start getting into microscopic levels here. And this is essentially bacteria. This is cells in our body, uh, E. coli. And this is basically where it gets to um, things like viruses. So this is the largest virus. This is a typical vi virus size and smallest thing visible to optical microscope. At this point, we reach an um, area that can only be visible with electron microscopes. So basically, these are microscopes that uh, rely on electron perturbations to see things. So uh, HIV virus, hepatitis B virus, a lot of smaller viruses are going to be in this sort of size. And as you can see, we have barely even covered uh, scale at all. We're still in maybe about 10% from where we started. This is uh, our DNA and basically the entire DNA on our planet. This is uh, what our cells are made from, some of the larger chemical compounds. And right now we reach what seems to be a water molecule, a carbon atom and atomic scale. Now, this is pretty much what we study in school. This is as far as we go with education. I don't think most people cover the rest in terms of um, smaller scale. Now, as you keep zooming in though, you'll actually discover more and more things. So a typical gamma ray wavelength is this big. Uh, this is what we would call a picometer. And for a while, we won't really see anything until we reach a scale right here where we actually get to a nuclei of an atom. So here's an electron. This is a uranium nucleus. And uh, some of the smaller nuclei are here. So a proton and neutron, they're about this big. And this is already very small, but as you can see, not small enough just yet. As you keep going and going and going, you'll actually discover that these links are not actually confirmed yet because we're not even sure if things are that small, uh, or at least we're not sure about the actual size of these small things, specifically these subatomic particles known as quarks. Uh, there is quite a lot of uh, different subatomic uh, particles we've discovered in the last few years. And as you can see, a lot of them have funny names like charm quark, uh, bottom quark, high energy neutrino. Okay, maybe that's not a funny name, but that's essentially how small they, we think they are. Then we reach another particle right here, top quark, much smaller than all the other ones. And eventually we reach a neutrino. As we keep going lower and lower, zooming in more and more, we eventually reach area where there's nothing for a while. There's actually quite nothing, at least nothing we've uh, confirmed or detected, but there is something that's coming up and you'll, you'll probably or might know what it is because I've talked about it in one of the previous videos. So let's zoom in all the way to the end until we discover what seems to be the end, and this end is the so-called Planck length. This is quantum foam, this is string theory, uh, quantum theory, and this right here, as you may have guessed from previous videos, or as you may have known from previous videos, is the size of a black hole. This is how small black holes are. Every single one of them is only one Planck length big. 
And when I say black hole, I mean the singularity in the middle of the black hole. We're not talking about the uh, event horizon, we're talking about the actual black hole itself. All of them are condensed into this tiny, tiny size. Okay, well, how about we go back now? And starting from here, we're going to start zooming out and visit some of the largest objects in the universe. Starting with, of course, this beautiful Japanese spider crab. These creatures are humongous. They actually grow really, really big, even larger than what this picture shows you. T-Rex is right there. Apollo lunar module. Some of the larger trees and larger animals, including the biggest dinosaur and the biggest uh, animal in existence, blue whale. Here's the biggest tree. Boeing 747. Saturn V, and as we keep zooming out, we're going to start discovering things that we're not as familiar with. These are all human-made objects, including uh, Vatican City, and these are some of the objects on um, our planet Earth, but here we come to one of the first asteroids, and uh, this is actually one of the largest human-made objects, Large Hadron Collider. This is how we study a lot of these particles, and this is actually how we discovered most of this stuff that you see here helped us discover a lot about subatomic particles. All right, let's move on. And oh, by the way, this is one of the Martian moons, Deimos, not very big, just slightly smaller than Mount Everest. So let's keep going uh, and we'll start finding some of the other moons in our solar system. Uh, these two are from Pluto. Uh, and as we keep zooming out, we'll start finding more and more solar system objects. So Eris and Sedna, these are dwarf planets. Uh, Pluto is right here as well. These are moons of, uh, this is a moon of Jupiter. There is Mars itself, and that's the moon of Saturn. There's Mercury. There's Earth. Uh, this is a white dwarf known as Sirius B. There's our neighbor Venus. And here is the entire continent of Asia. So as you can see, Asia is actually pretty big. And now we're going to come to some really interesting things, including, of course, Minecraft world. If you actually decide to walk through the entire Minecraft, apparently it's the size of Neptune. And I've read that somewhere before, but I've never tested it myself. So if it is true, let me know. Uh, Saturn, uh, Tress 4, so these are some of the exoplanets we've discovered. And um, Proxima Centauri is the nearest star to us. Uh, this is another red dwarf nearby. Captain Star is one of the neighbors that we have. There is our sun. There is the next neighbor, Alpha Centauri B and Alpha Centauri A. And now we start reaching some of the other stars we see in our night sky, including Vega, Sirius A, Altair, Pollux, Spica, Arcturus, some of the more popular stars that you may have heard of before. This is one of the Orion Belt stars. And now we start reaching into a region of space where we have super giants like Betelgeuse, um, and V.Y. Canis Majoris. And this right here is the distance of Neptune from the Sun, so this is about 30-ish uh, astronomical units. Here is actually kind of what we consider to be the size of our solar system, at least up to Kuiper's Belt. And currently, the farthest object from, from our planet is Voyager 1. This is how far away it is from us. Now, we're going to be reaching regions of space that we are not as familiar with and basically we get to see some of the nebula sizes we get to see uh distance from proxima centauri the closest star to um alpha centauri which is actually not our sun just yet and we get to see some of the unusual uh, nebula like for example cat's eye nebula which is one of the most beautiful nebula you could get to see in the night sky I guess Hourglass Nebula is actually pretty beautiful too. And this is what a light year would look like. And this is technically the unofficial size of our solar system. The Oort Cloud is maybe a few light years across. And this is where all of our comets are stored. And from our estimation, there is something like five masses of our Earth stored as comets around the Sun. And this is why even a small perturbation by, you know, a passing star through the Oort Cloud may actually cause a lot of these comets to come and crash with our beautiful planet Earth. So, some more nebula here. Some of them I won't be reading or exploring because this is for you guys to explore using this link that I posted in the description. 
And let's actually go into some of their more interesting objects. Oh, by the way, Tarantula Nebula is the biggest and most beautiful nebula nearby. This is in the Large Magellanic Cloud. Now we get to see galaxies. So, Small Magellanic Cloud, uh, Large Magellanic Cloud is right here. This is one of the ones you can easily see in a night sky if you're in a dark enough location. Triangle Galaxy is one of the bigger neighbors we have. Sombrero Galaxy is one of the more interesting one, uh, looking ones because it actually does look like a sombrero. And there is our own Milky Way. And as you zoom out, you'll find that our galaxy is actually not very, very big. As a matter of fact, it's actually relatively small, especially compared to galaxies like this one. This is the largest we discovered so far, IC1101. I've talked about this galaxy in one of the previous videos, and we actually got to explore it in Space Engine as well. Now, this is a distance from Andromeda Galaxy to our own Milky Way. It's about uh, 2.5-ish uh, light uh, years, and as you can see, IC1101 is even larger than that. Our entire local group of like 53, 54 galaxies is about this big. And let's zoom out and discover some shapes and some objects you may have not been aware of. For example, Virgo Supercluster used to be known as the largest object in the universe until we discovered that even this is just a part of something else. We also understand that something is pulling our solar system and all of this stuff toward it, and we call this the Great Attractor. We don't really know what it is, but it's something that pulls Milky Way and a lot of other galaxies toward it. It's somewhere at this distance from us. Then we have what's known as Pisces Cetus Supercluster Complex, and eventually we're going to be reaching what's known as... Oh, actually it's right here, Sloan Great Wall. This is one of the largest objects known to us, and this is the one of the largest complex, complexes we discovered so far. And not so far away from this, we get to discover the observable universe. That's about as far as we can see. This is basically uh, as far as we can see with our uh, telescopes. But we think that the universe is much bigger. We think it's about this big. And this is because we don't actually see most of the universe because it expands faster than we can actually see it. It expands faster than the speed of light. Now, all of this kind of gives you an idea that the universe itself, especially as you zoom through it, is a very, very, very large very mysterious place, and we yet have so much to discover out there. So, you know, keep looking, keep learning, because there is so much more interesting stuff out there that we still don't know about. Now, definitely explore this beautiful simulation on your own and read through some of these uh, beautiful things, like, for example, learn about this amazing dinosaur by clicking on it. And if you want to do this yourself, the link is in the description below. And if you still haven't subscribed, do subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys learning through simulations and video games, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video, space out, and as always, bye bye. And let's zoom in all the way back to the plank length, just to discover how the scariest things in the universe are actually the smallest. They're only about plank length long. The black holes. Anyway. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.